What's up guys and welcome back to the second channel. Got another fast paced e-bike review video. This one on the Dehan Unio E20 folding compact e-bike. This is totally different than anything I've had before and actually the first mid-mount I've ever tried. I've never used one before. Usually they always have the motor mounted in the hub. So when this bike arrived, I was blown away by how light the box was. I was thinking there must be some kind of mistake. It feels like a, a regular old bike, but sure enough, I pulled it out of the cardboard box and here we are, all 36 pounds of it. Super, super lightweight. Most of the e-bikes I ride are you know, upwards of 80, 90 pounds. Uh, it came already unfolded, so all we have to do for assembly is fold these bars up. You can see they do have like a safety right there. You got to fold open and then fold that make it flush lock it into place now there is uh, if this ever gets loose over time with these latches there usually is uh, some adjustability down here there's a little nut so if you have to you know snug that back up but out of the box it feels uh, good and tight next we can unfold this clamp and raise the bars up they stop right there but I do see a minimum insertion about midway so that's going to be the highest position they recommend and then up here i see the levers are pointed down they also have another oh this is actually a, a locking latch here and once that's down it you can't pull it up unless you pull up on this little guy and then you can twist the bars uh, to position them how you like there's these little rubber stoppers so they don't go side to side it just rotates and i see they did put some grease on here Nice action. Well, on the seat post, quite unique. The battery is actually built into it. Now, this is the, the charge port up top. And then on the tippy top, you have the on and off switch. This is made by Dangguan Yizhan Electronics Technology, but is advertised to have Samsung cells in it. And it's rated at 36 volts, 9.5 amp hours, or 342 watt hours. And I'll raise it up open that big latch and we got a, a maximum basically that's as low as you can keep the seat because otherwise you know it's just sticking out too far on the bottom and you could catch something with it and let's see so we have increments over here it goes all the way down to zero that's the minimum insertion right yonder with it locked off in that place that's what you're looking like now i'm six foot three 180 pounds let's see how i look on there Oh, yeah, that's, uh, that's higher than I would even need it. It feels pretty good. I think we'll drop it down about midway. And to plug the battery in, you got the little slinky cord on the bottom. That way you can keep the seat at different heights. Uh, line the little key tab up and usually just you know, push it right on and it locks into place. I did charge this up last night, so we got the green light. The charger is rated at an output of 42 volts, 2 amps. The pedals are made by Welgo, and it's lefty tighty on the left side, righty tighty on the right. These are 15 millimeter. A lot of time I see people comment that you should be greasing these threads so they don't get seized since it's uh, dissimilar metals, steel going into the aluminum. I've never had that problem on a bike, so I'm, but if you're riding around the, the beach, a salty environment, maybe a good idea to do. Good and tight on those with the 15 mil. To fold them, you simply push in, roll up, and then, uh, yeah, easy to unfold too. Well, you can pump these tires up now. They're pretty darn flat. These are CST branded uh, 20 inch by two inch. They recommend 40 to 65 PSI. I'm gonna go with 50. And there's a look at the final product. At this point, it would be a great idea to go over every fastener on the bike, make sure everything is good and tight, or better yet, maybe bring it to a bicycle mechanic and have him do all the final adjustments and, and look over. Uh, let's go over a few of the other features. We do have disc brakes on the front and rear. They're cable actuated. They are Tektro Airways. Uh, the rear rack, nice and sturdy. It's made out of aluminum has a max load of 10 kilograms, or what's that, about 22 pounds, right? And a kickstand, also aluminum, and it's adjustable. The mid-motor is 200 watts, which they advertise a top speed of 20 miles an hour on this bike. Now, it doesn't have a 
a throttle on it, twist throttle or anything. It's only pedal assist. You do have five modes for that. Now the advertised range is up to 50 miles. However, you've seen in most of the e-bike videos, we're lucky to hit half of that. It's really gonna vary on your weight. You know, if you're a 60 pound guy, five foot, you might get that. And, and on this, of course, it's gonna vary on how much you're pedaling. I do like the bell. Sounds really nice, high quality. It's actually by Nuvo. I love that it's got the front and rear fenders. They are plastic with stainless steel brackets, front headlight, built-in reflector, uh, no tail light. I don't see any wiring going to that. It's just a large reflector. And I guess let's power this up real quick. Uh, the button under the seat, you press that and it stays in. And then up here, I suppose, uh, probably, uh, Hit the mode button once and boom, we're fired up. Got six bars on the battery. Let's try to fold it. I think they want you to drop the seat all the way down. And one thing I'll show you is you gotta be careful on this seat post. Uh, there, there is a groove for the wire to go, but if it's not in the groove, you can potentially pinch the wiring uh, between the ground. So be very careful with that. But I will lock her out about yay. And then again, open this lock, fold down the latch drop the bars same deal on this one you got to pull up open and here we go i guess i could have put the kickstand up too uh that's it it is folded i mean that's the biggest benefit with these is their portability you could bring it on the train during any hours you know sometimes they'll they'll not let you on the train if it's during peak hours and you don't have a folding bike this one not gonna be a problem very easy to pull the battery up. Just twist the blue connector, pull it off, open up, and there we are. You can take it with you. <laughs> All right, good boy. You win, Gus. You, you win. win. Don't bite me. Good boy. This Dahan is blowing my mind. The mid motor is such a game changer. Like, this is, oh, I cannot wait to put some miles on this. Uh, Jen is maxed out on the speed. Not. And here we go. Speed five. Cruising. Let's get to our max. All right, I can feel the power pulled back a little bit there. Uh, Riding right, no hands on this bike. Definitely, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend it. It feels dicey. And I'd call that top speed about 19 miles an hour. So yes, you do have to keep rotating the pedals, but I'd call a comfortable speed about 15 mile an hour. Uh, anything over that, you know, you're, you're pedaling a fair bit. And we are on the, the Assist 5. There's a blue heron. Even with these skinny tires, the ability on rough terrain this rip wrap, well, no problem. Just shreds right through it. And having that mid motor, you got plenty of torque. It's not struggling at all. It's a little bouncy, this, because I have the tires up so high. Now, this hill, none of the e bikes I have could ever make it up with the hub motor. I'm curious to see if the mid mount can do it. It's probably about 20 degree slope. Let's see how it makes it. Oh, look at that. Effortless. Motor's right up. It's almost wheelie enough. Holy smokes. Now, since it doesn't come across on video, let's just show you that slope. Uh, yep, 20 degrees. Coming up here for a nice sunset. The second one didn't quite make it up, but this is probably, I mean, it's a lot rockier is a problem. Yeah, 25 degrees. That's not super accurate, you know, if we had a two by four across here, it'd be better, but. Well, most electric bikes, you hold the minus and it'll go into a walking mode. Yep, there it goes. Although it's so steep, but there it's uh, one hand that's actually spinning the tire. Oh, they just keep building this up higher and higher, huh? Next evening, I'm ready to go do the range test with my 180 pound self, six foot three. We'll see if it can do, hopefully 20 miles. We're gonna head to Bristol, it's 10 miles each way. So again, to turn it on, we got the blue light, you press that in once and then hold this for three seconds. Kind of didn't go over too much of this yesterday, I don't believe. Uh, to switch it from miles per hour to kilometers, 
you can hold or vice versa you hold these two together and then on this screen this actually resets your trip so okay i already reset that press it again it goes and you see mile per hour so now we can cycle through between those two to get out of the settings you hold both these again or hit them once and you're out and so to cycle through the modes you hit the m you see it's on trip right now that's max speed that's total mileage did 6.3 miles yesterday i guess uh, and time elapsed and then back to max and trip anyway i'm going to keep it on pedal assist five rock that the whole time we'll see how far we make it i want to show you so we are 2.4 miles in and here's a quick acceleration uh, test to kind of show you now i'm in the top gear on the, the shifter right now and that does inhibit how how quickly you get going so check this out we'll start pedaling and i feel the motor i mean just seamlessly kick in and the harder you push on the pedals it does get more speed picking up quick uh, but in that time so uh, again on this range test i'm just kind of rotating i'm not really putting much power into there but that brought us up to to 15 mile an hour and when you downshift on this if you're spinning the pedals you can kind of hear it get clicky and cluttery uh, so i almost recommend downshifting once and then go ahead and rotate it again rotate it because you know, otherwise it's trying to spin that motor at the same time and you know these pedals aren't a direct link to this main sprocket there's some kind of maybe sprag clutch or something or another in there i'll i'll show you here in a second but that's directly connected to the motor and with it in the first gear i mean the torque when i go ahead and pedal it's just it's it's crazy you can actually hear the motor spooling up like it has a lot more power if you keep pedaling and you upshift this is what it sounds like it engages a little hard you know because it's putting the, mo the power of the motor in there i don't know how well you can see that but the front sprocket continues to spin a little bit when you stop pedaling which uh, equates to you not feeling the motor at all when it turns off it's it's very very seamless and as i was showing yesterday really 15 16 mile an hour is all it does if you're only rotating the pedals uh, the only way to, to get up to 19 or 20 is if you put quite a bit more power in with your legs which we're not doing on this range test we're going to keep it uh, ju i'm just just rotating these i'm not putting my power into it which the speedometer is accurate compared to my gps speedo uh, seven miles in and we have not budged one bar i guess this is going to be a pretty long ride cross over bridge head up to laborville i think it's motoring itself up this hill no problem but again if it struggles on the hill you can always drop it down a gear which is not the case with a hub motor bike. Cruising over to Delaware. It's stunning weather today. Probably gonna get chilly tonight though. I said yesterday I wouldn't ride this bike with no hands and uh, I still stand with that but you can do it it just it takes a lot more balance I guess because the, the bike's lighter smaller wheels and you know your seat post is up real high it's not quite as stable but it's uh you know it's doable right above the battery meter there is the power meter and it goes up to five bars like so if you start pedaling it actually accelerates up to 17 18 really quick and then it backs the power off on its own it's almost like it's it's forcing you to try to to put some effort in and that's even again we're on five assist right now so i don't know if that's adjustable or not but basically this bike's trying to keep you to to push and push or just conserve its own energy for that matter speaking of we are down to four bars out of six and at 9.7 miles oh, these people got great properties here in titusville because they're right all along the river they own the property down the river but they are about oh, i'd say 40 feet higher than the water keep your boat down there don't have to worry about flooding and it's nice red sunset sky tonight
I didn't show you guys the brakes. Uh, even though they're not hydraulic, I mean, you just tap them and locks it up, no problem. Same on the front brakes too. Although if we had good pavement, it wouldn't be skidding. Passing the golden nugget. Great little flea market. Sometimes we come up from Yardley on the jet skis up here, but usually when the water's a touch higher, cause it's really rocky down here. I mean, you'll, you'll bust your hull open. And as long as you make it to like here, it's totally fine. It's everything down here that's not good. We made it to Lambertville, 17.3 uh, miles and still showing three bars. I'm gonna take a quick break in town here and then we'll start heading back. Hopefully it makes it. Gotta walk your bike. A couple hours later and we are riding back in the pitch dark. Let's fire up the light though. Oh yeah, small but mighty light. And we got 17 miles to go, 10 miles to the next town. We got three bars on the battery. We'll, uh, we'll see how it goes. By the way, you just hold the plus button to turn it on and off. Hold it down for like two, three seconds, and here it goes. Whoo, I don't want to drive into the canal. And there it is, we have hit maximum range. The uh, battery started blinking, and it was still holding 15, 16 mile an hour. And then just in the last mile, it slowed down to about five or six. So we're calling that quits. 27.8 miles. Not bad for only a 9.5 amp hour battery, if I remember that right. I think that's what it was. I can pedal it the extra six miles home. Because with how light this bike is, I mean, we're doing 15 mile an hour right now. This bike's just so light, it feels like a regular old bicycle without a battery or motor. Well, that was a fun ride, and I think I'm ready to wrap this review video up. Definitely a giant thumbs up for the Dehan Unio E20. Dehan, Dahan, not sure how you say it. Uh, but this is more of a mild e-bike. You know, you don't have the throttle. You're not going to be doing 28 miles an hour. The top speed that I got on the bike was 19 miles an hour, but as I showed you, it was more realistically 15 if you're just pedaling without uh, giving a lot of effort. However, that did lead to a, a, an extraordinary range. We got almost 30 miles out of this, so I have no doubt if you were pedaling this like a, a normal bike, you would get 50 miles without a problem. Uh, I was very impressed with the, how bright that headlight was, as I told you. And you know, overall, it was just a, a nice little cruiser. It's it's the biggest benefit here is the fact that like I could call an Uber and and get a ride home, and it's not going to be a problem getting this. They might be a little annoyed with it being all dusty and dirty, uh, but you could easily fit this in a passenger seat, a trunk, wherever you got to go. It's a very compact, capable high quality bike. As far as the battery, I will let you know right here how long that takes to charge. I get it on charge when we get home. I would imagine uh, probably about six hours or so, but we'll see. And that concludes this one. So hopefully I didn't miss too much and you found the video helpful if this is something that maybe you're looking up and you found this video. You know, I know there's so many different makes and models of these e-bikes and it's they're all different, you know? So definitely more review videos to come. Thanks very much for watching, tuning in. Uh, any feedback you guys have, always drop that down below. Appreciate it. I try to read all the comments and respond to ones I can. Uh, no nonsense, no how here, too. And I'll see you guys in a future video very soon. And at the end of these videos, I always like to flip through the owner's manual. So you can check that out. I don't know if you want to pause and be able to read any of these pages. Hopefully this works for ya. The most exciting part of the video. I actually didn't, didn't even read this yet. Didn't even. Let me just keep it long enough for you guys to pause. There's your error codes. Here comes Gus. Hopefully he doesn't come into the picture. Oh, he's Gus. <laughs> Yeah, he's a good boy. Oh, now he's climbing on my back. Sorry, I'm getting sidetracked here. And that's it. 
is your headquarters. Oh, you don't like me laughing at you, huh? I can't have that? Give me that. Give me that.